Uh, Father Victor, uh, today we're talking about maybe about the major icon of our parish, the Montreal Iveron icon. Uh, what can you tell about its very special story? I think the first special thing is that, uh, uh, at least for me, I didn't realize that we were going to gather to do this uh, short video on the uh, feast of the uh, original Iveron icon, which is kept in the Iveron monastery, Mount Athos. But uh, I think everything that has to do with the Iveron icon is no coincidence, but uh, uh, providential. Today, indeed, is the uh, day of the Iveron icon. It's also celebrated in February. And uh, uh, of course, there's, there are different copies of the Iveron icon. The original, as I mentioned, is on Mount Athos, but there are other miraculous copies of the icon of the Mother of God. One is in Moscow. I believe it's kept in the uh, Novodevichy convent in the uh, <coughs> great cathedral there. And then in 1982, um, a contemporary miraculous even an icon appeared. Uh, and that's what we will talk about today. Um, on November 24th, 1982, uh, a uh, Orthodox convert, uh, Chilean convert, he was from Chile, by the name of Jose Munoz Cortez, uh, traveled to Mount Athos as a pilgrim for the first time in his life. He was very interested in iconography. Uh, he was a very pious man who wanted to visit the uh, renowned monasteries on Mount Athos. There are 20 of them. I'm not exactly sure how many he was able to visit. And uh, he visited uh, a small little dependency of the Iveron Monastery uh, on the southern tip of Mount Athos, which is a place where there are small little skeets, skeets being tiny monasteries that are dependent upon the larger monasteries in a spiritual uh, sense. And uh, the uh, small little skeet that he visited was named after the Nativity of Christ. And uh, the monks supported themselves uh, by painting icons. And um, Jose went into the icon studio, spoke to the monks there, and uh, he was drawn to one icon uh, which was a copy of the Iveron icon. And he offered to buy the icon, knowing that the monks were selling some of their icons that they painted to support themselves. And uh, they told him that, no, this icon is the first one that was painted in the skeet, and uh, uh, we're not about to give it up. Well, Jose was very much uh, disappointed, but understood the reasoning behind this. And um, at night, he went to the services. And then in the morning, when he and his companion were preparing to leave the little skeet, uh, he noticed the abbot of the skeet, Father Clement, coming down the stairway and rushing to him, carrying a, a package under his arm. And uh, he handed the package to Jose and said, you know, I have, I had this vision uh, that this icon needs to go with you to North America. And he opened the package and it was the icon he was asking for. It was the Iveron icon painted in the skit. So having received the icon, he straight away made his way to the Iveron monastery uh, to see the original icon, which we are celebrating today, October 25th. And he was able to place his copy of the icon against the original icon and had it blessed in this manner. And then he came home after visiting um, Monathos, 
came home to Montreal, Canada, where he had an apartment, and placed uh, this precious icon, which he received uh, in his icon corner, lit uh, vigil lamp, and um, <clears throat> the icon was placed near the relics of Saint Elizabeth, the Grand Duchess Elizabeth, the new martyr. And um, he prayed and um, went, to, went to sleep. And he awoke from a very strong um, smell, a smell of roses, like, as he described it, but very strong. And he thought that perhaps somehow he maybe spilled some perfume, cologne, which he didn't have. Um, <clears throat> and then he noticed when he came up to the icon in the uh, dark, he noticed uh, a reflection of the icon from the vigil lamp, and he saw something, some like teardrops coming down the front of the icon. And he touched it, it smelled it, and he realized that the um, smell was coming from the icon itself, from this oil. He brought the icon later, I'm not sure if it was the next day or the day, several days later, to the cathedral, to um, Metro, uh, Met, uh, Archbishop Vitali, who became later, three years later, the Metropolitan, the first hierarch of the Russian Orthodox Church abroad. Metropolitan kept it in the cathedral to, to see if this was truly a wonder from God, a miracle from God. And sure enough, the icon kept streaming myrrh. Of course, word got out, uh, spread around the, 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 our church to far all over the world. People found out that there's this myrrh streaming icon that has appeared in our midst. We here in Washington also found out about this. And um, I found Jose's telephone. I invited him to come to Washington with the icon, which he did. And our church just so happened to be the first one that he visited with the icon. After that, for 15 years, he would take the icon everywhere, all over the world, Australia, Canada, America, Europe, um, South America. And for 15 years, uh, he was the custodian of the icon. Um, Jose was a very simple man, although he was well read. He taught art uh, in the university in uh, Montreal. He painted icons um, and was generally speaking a very, very pious, humble man who spent a lot of time praying, who had incredible love for the Mother of God. And um, he, when the icon started to stream myrrh, he promised that he would never make, keep a penny of the monies that he received from grateful believers. He would never keep the money for himself. Uh, he spent the money on embellishing the icon. He helped many people. Uh, and somehow, just giving away his money, to the point that a group of ladies in Montreal <clears throat> got together and formed an organization called Icon House. And uh, their goal was to take care of his personal needs, to buy him food, to buy him clothing, um, to pay his rent. Um, and they did this selflessly for many years, until 1997. In 1997, Jose went once again to Greece, intending to visit the holy places above Mount Athos. Um, <clears throat> he took the icon with him, 
We know this for a fact. And he left the icon on the island of Egina, Greek island, where the relics of Saint Nyctarius of uh, Pentapolsky are kept and venerated. Brother Jose had a great love for Saint Nyctarius. But we know for sure that the icon was left there for safekeeping. Because uh, after he left the icon, he returned to Athens to meet with a friend, Father Alexander Ivashevich from Argentina, who also wanted to visit the holy mountain with uh, Jose. And um, in interviews that Father Alexander gave after the tragic death of Jose in Greece, uh, he states that he didn't know the icon was there in Greece. The reason uh, Jose didn't tell him that the icon was there because he wanted to be able to visit the holy places uh, without drawing attention to himself. Jose's intention was to go back to Hegina uh, after the pilgrimage was, was done, take the icon and come back to Montreal for the celebration of the 15th anniversary of the uh, appearance of myrrh on the holy icon. So he bid Father Alexander farewell. He went to a hotel room in Athens, Greece, and on October 31st, 1997, October 31st, of course, we will be marking that day in a few days from now. Uh, let's see, October 31st, six days after the Iveron icon on Mount Athos, which we are celebrating today, is uh, known in this country, America, as Halloween, which is a, a day when many people dress up as goblins, devils, skeletons, and uh, try to celebrate a pagan holiday. Anyway, the night of October 31st, in a hotel, the Grand Hotel in, in Athens, uh, Jose was brutally murdered. Um, apparently, the people who murdered him desired to steal the icon. Not only because it was uh, a precious icon, it was decorated with many precious stones and silver, but probably most of all because the icon was bringing people to Christ and the enemy of our salvation, Satan, wanted it destroyed. However, the icon was not with Jose. The icon was in the island of Egina. And um, years before that, years before his death, Father Clement, who gave Jose the icon um, and told him to take it to North America, prophesied that if there is no, if a worthy place is not found in the West for the icon, the icon will return to Mount Athos. Has the icon returned to Mount Athos or not? We don't know. Nobody knows where it is. Jose was uh, finally buried in the cemetery of Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville, New York. It has become a place of pilgrimage. People come there to pray. There's a beautiful um, cross erected over his grave and there are always fresh flowers. Uh, people collect oil from the lamp that burns on his uh, grave. And um, this all happened almost 21 years ago. And for 20 years, we have been organizing a pilgrimage to Jordanville to um, 
remember Jose, to keep his memory alive in the memory of our faithful, and with the idea that perhaps one day he might be, uh, should be, canonized as a martyred saint. He was the chosen one of the Mother of God. She chose him to uh, to keep her icon and, and to share in the grace that this icon exuded, the grace of myrrh. The first, in time for the first pilgrimage that we did to Jose's burial site, um, Father Chrysostomos, the iconographer that painted the, the icon which Jose, the Montreal icon, learned of our love and remembrance of Jose and was moved. And he decided to paint for our parish an exact copy of the icon. You see it here before you. And um, the jeweler, Greek jeweler, that uh, made the first silver cover for the Montreal icon, made a similar cover for this icon. And uh, this icon was taken by the jeweler, his name was um, Mr. Um, Agridis. Um, he took one to Mount Athos, he received the icon from Father Chrysostomus, took the icon to the Iveron Monastery, and exactly as Brother Jose did, pressed the icon against the original and brought it back, brought it to Washington in time for our first annual pilgrimage to Jordanville. We brought the icon, we placed it on Jose's gravesite and served the first um, anniversary panichida. And uh, the, this little shrine that you see, the wooden shrine in which we keep our icon, uh, was made especially for the Montreal icon and given to Brother Jose, and he kept it in, in his apartment. And um, the ladies who were in charge of icon house, caring for Brother Jose's needs, uh, needed to liquidate his apartment uh, several months after uh, his uh, martyric death. And my Matushka and another parishioner took our church van, uh, rented a trailer, which they attached to the van, went to Montreal, and took everything they could so that nothing would, um, nothing would be destroyed. Uh, some little furniture, his clothing, this shrine, some icons which contained relics. Uh, Brother Jose collected relics all over the world. He went to Catholic countries, um, received relics of saints who lived in the first millennium, and he, collected, he amassed about 3,000 relics. And each time he would come to Washington, he would share some of these relics with us. If we're so spoiled with many holy things, it's because Jose brought many. Uh, the bulk of the relics that he had went to Bulgaria, to the Pokrov Monastery, a convent in, this, in the town of Sofia. He loved Bulgaria very much, but that's a separate story. In any case, Matushkin, our parishioner, brought, brought back the shrine. We, cleaned it up a little bit, uh, and now we set the icon in the shrine, and this has become uh, probably the most venerated icon in our church. And if you notice, the icon uh, has turned a little bit gray. Um, this, we found this out the following way. We thought that this was maybe the, the wood was rotting or something, or there was mold appearing on the icon. And um, for one of our 
feast days or one of our pilgrimages, I can't remember now, um, an icon restorer that is a parishioner of our church by the name of Irina uh, brought her infrared lamp. We removed the icon and we wanted her to, to clean it in time for, for, the, for the feast. And she, when she drew the uh, infrared lamp close to the icon, this gray substance turned into liquid. And uh, we concluded, and it was fragrant. And it was the same fragrance as Brother Jose's icon. So we concluded that this is a dry myrrh. So after that, of course, we're not touching the icon. It's no longer to be cleaned because this is also a wonderful sign. Oftentimes when people come by this icon, uh, sometimes they're, they're hit with this great, beautiful smell. Not always, but sometimes. And among the relics that uh, we received after Jose's death, by the way, all the things that we received, uh, we took from his apartment. Uh, we claim, have no claim on it. We, we pray that one day when Jose is, is um, canonized, uh, all of his personal possessions will go to the place where um, he is venerated the most, a, a central place where people can come and uh, pray and observe and see uh, what he was all about. And we hope this place will be near Jordanville, near the monastery, um, because that's where his remains uh, are buried. So among the relics we brought back from Montreal was a, a little reliquary with uh, scribbling in Spanish, and we couldn't make it out. We couldn't read the right handwriting. Finally, we found someone who was able to decipher, and it turned out that uh, this little reliquary that we placed on the icon is a small thread from the belt of the Mother of God. Of course, several years ago, the belt itself is kept on Mount Athos. It went to Russia and attracted hundreds and thousands of people who came to venerate it. So this is the story behind this icon. It's uh, an exact copy of the Montreal icon. And all the uh, stones that you see, this, these are stones that were donated to us to, to place um, on the silver encasing of this icon. All these years after the death of Brother Jose, he died and he was killed in 1997, uh, people kept asking, where is the icon? Uh, well, why is the icon gone? What happened? Uh, people just couldn't understand and no one could. Uh, but remembering what Father Clement said, that if there is a place that is not worthy of this icon, it will come back to Mount Athos. Of course, that grieved many of us, the fact that we were not found worthy uh, to have the icon in our midst. Um, so, in 2007, October, several months after, the Russian Orthodox Church abroad and the Russian Orthodox Church in the motherland uh, reunited. The Mother of God came back to us in an exact copy of the Montreal icon, a reproduction, a small little reproduction of an icon pasted on wood was given by a pious Orthodox priest who bought this in a bookstore in Canada and gave it to an American by the name of Nyctarios Youngston in Hawaii. And uh, this little laminated icon began streaming abundant myrrh in 2007, October. 
And uh, all I can say is that the icon returned, but in, in a different form, in a different size, but a, a reproduction of the very same icon. And I, I, I say that this happened in 2007 because I am sure that uh, the reunification, when people come together, when the churches come together uh, in union, this is God-pleasing. So this icon began traveling all over the world. Um, and it is an incredible miracle. And we are grateful to God that on November 2nd, the icon from Hawaii will be here in our cathedral the day before we leave for Jordanville. It will come with us to Jordanville to Brother Jose's grave. And we will do the panichidas there for him in the presence of the Hawaiian mercy streaming Iveron icon of the Mother of God. Um, and this time, uh, the son of uh, Mr. Agridis, who made the Silvariza for this icon and for the original Montreal icon, made, he's carrying on his father's footsteps, he made a beautiful silver Ariza for the Hawaiian icon. So we're very excited that the icon is coming, that the icon will be with us in Jordanville for the 21st anniversary of Brother Jose's death. And um, this year we will celebrate the 36th anniversary of the Montreal icon on November 24th. Um, and on that day we will serve a liturgy, as we always do now. Um, the Hawaiian icon will not be with us, but the Kursk root icon of the Mother of God will be with us that day. And of course, we will place this icon next to the Kursk and uh, pray that God have mercy in our soul and that God bring, again, reunion to the church because it, we are now all suffering through the tragic news of, uh, of what is going on in Ukraine uh, with the uh, patriarch of Constantinople lifting sanctions on uh, a number of uh, schismatics and bringing uh, chaos to the church situation in, in Ukraine. So that's, we need to pray during our pilgrimage and uh, uh, every day for peace for the, for the millions of uh, Orthodox believers in, in Ukraine. And in Russia as well? Of course, of course we always do that, but, but, uh, and we, but now we need to really focus on, on helping Metropolitan Anufri, who was a very prayerful, saintly man who was, um, loves his country, Ukraine, and loves his people and people love him. That, um, and he's the only uh, recognized uh, high, first hierarch of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. So I just, we just pray and hope that um, the forces that are bringing about all these troubles will, will be put to bay through the grace of the Mother of God. And I want uh, to finish our interview uh, going back to bro brother Jose, oh, brother Jose, and uh, the uh, Iveron icon, um, uh, I know that you lead the church commission uh, for uh, his uh, canonization. How far you move forward in this job, and how far we are from his uh, from the beginning of the process of canonization? Well, we haven't moved very much. Uh, to be quite honest with you, um, uh, there, I mean, we've collected uh, a lot of materials uh, about Jose, about his life, uh, about his works, about the miracles that have been wrought by the, um, through the prayers of the Mother of God through the icon that Jose kept for 15 years. 
Uh, these materials are collected in two books, one in Russian, other in English. Um, veneration for Brother Jose is, is um, growing in Russia. Um, we have copies of uh, an Akafis that was written by someone in Russia, a very beautiful Akafis to the Ivron Icon. Uh, we have uh, people have written Akafis to Brother Jose um, in Spanish, French. Um, the Optina Monastery, uh, some of the monks there believe that Brother Jose was truly uh, secretly tonsured a monk. Uh, and uh, they even had an uh, icon commissioned, painted, of Brother Jose, which when we were visiting there years ago, they, they gave us one, one of those icons, which we also bring to Jordanville. Um, but there's very little movement here, unfortunately. The Eastern American diocesan website has opened a um, rubric on their site dedicated to Brother Jose, and anyone who um, has anything remembrances of him or can, can recall um, uh, miracles uh, are welcome to write in and, uh, and it will be published. published. Uh, our parish is at the same thing. We, we also have a, a, a chapter or rubric on the website uh, dedicated to him. And of course, these pilgrimages, which we do every year, is, as I said at the beginning, we do this to keep his memory alive so that the flame of uh, his life not be extinguished. The last question, do you have your specific personal story related to this icon which can you share with us? Well, probably, you know, there are many stories uh, that can be related, but I think the bottom line, the most important thing, is uh, when the icon came uh, to Washington, uh, as it does now through, through the, in the guise of the Hawaiian icon, uh, it is amazing to see how people are enlightened, how, how people's faith is strengthened um, by being in the presence of such a great miracle. And I remember Brother Jose would always say that the greatest miracle of, the, of the, his Montreal icon is that it drew people closer to Christ. It um, inspired them to repent. It inspired them to come to the church to receive the sacraments, the mysteries. And Brother Jose always considered this to be the greatest miracle. Of course, there were healing miracles. There, um, other types of miracles that are all collected in the, the book that I mentioned to you. Uh, but again, the greatest miracle was, was the drawing of people towards the faith. Thank you very much.